What's up everyone? I got my head all packaged up, mailed out to Apex. They actually emailed me and texted me this morning, said that my head's done. My buddy Ron came through, made this awesome engine mount that I can mount my regulator rectifier on for Project Woods Ripper. Uh, when I had it mocked up, the factory tank or the stock tank was real tight where I wanted it. May have been rubbing on the wires, I don't know because I really couldn't see. But the buddy I did the YZ250 engine build for, he actually has an aftermarket oversized acerbus tank. And he brought that over, I put that on there, and it actually had a good half inch, I'd say, all the way around it. I didn't tighten it down, I didn't mount it solid, I just slid it on. And comparing that to the stock tank, it worked a lot better. So I actually ended up going out and buying one. Uh, I'm gonna mount that on. I got the head from Apex coming. I got the regular rectifier mount that's gonna go on that. But uh, I also got a buddy that brought me this KX250. It's an 01. The clutch is hanging up on it. You can put it in gear, pull the clutch in, and it won't roll forward. It will, but it'll turn over. So I gotta pull, drain the oil out of that, pull the clutch cover off, have a look at that. If you want to be new cables, uh, just pretty much go through it and make it mint. I guess that's what he says right here. He wants it to run mint and he wants it to be safe and he wants it to be reliable. So I'm going to go ahead and do what I would do to a bike to make it back to factory or back to stock and at least last 40 hours, which is normally around my maintenance. brought me this bike last Sunday, I think, so I didn't really do any filming on it. I just did a quick once over. Looked at a bunch of stuff. He didn't really want me to look at suspension. He wanted me to look at the engine uh, and just to get it rideable. He wants to just be able to ride it and then we'll go from there. I'm just going to go through it and make notes of everything that I think needs to be done. And the first really look that I had on it, he is, he wants chain and sprockets. This chain right here is, well, too loose, but it's just kind of beat. So, bought a chain, sprockets brand new. He actually got new tires on it, new rims, new hubs, because I guess the hubs on it were shot. This bike has been sitting for a while, front and rear. Uh, the front sprocket actually looks great. It's a tooth high, but he's also a tooth low in the rear. He's going to be riding in the woods or just trail riding it, so I figured the motocross bike being geared kind of low, one tooth up, you know, a couple couple clicks up on it isn't going to be a bad thing. It actually widened his gears out a little bit for him. Uh, a little bit of hardware here. Rear wheel spacers, he only brought one of them to me. I texted him said he couldn't find the other one so I just went ahead and ordered an OEM one because it was it's actually a lot cheaper than buying a set because I already had one so I might as well just buy the other one uh, this is one of my pet peeves right here is I don't know if you can see it but there's actually a little bit of cracks going on in the boot here ordered another one of those uh, it was missing the clamp to go from the carburetor to the intake boot here he actually Brought me a new filter, which is awesome. Gonna go ahead and oil that up and put it in for him. Uh, shifter is a little loose. I can probably tighten that up. They're aluminum. I'm really not a big fan of aluminum shifters. I like steel ones because they stay in place a lot longer. The aluminum ones, I guess if you clean them and you get them set right, you'll be all right. But that's just personal preference. Clutch levers, just beat. Uh, clutch cables beat. Um, I got it all the way adjusted out here, but you can see that it's. I just went ahead and bought them a new one. I think it was like twelve dollars. Throttle cable. Um, brake lever. 
because somebody did something cool with this one. And I got a clutch cover gasket for them. There's some miscellaneous hardware that I just kind of went through the bike real quick and uh, pipe mount right here because that's broken off. Want to be able to mount the pipe up good for them so it's going to stay on there and it's not going to be half-assed. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get this thing up on the stands. I do have a table, it's outside, but Project Woods Ripper and the doctor is in the way. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it the old way before I got the table where I put two a uh, stand underneath here and a stand underneath here and then I put a ratchet strap around through the rafters onto the handlebars to kind of keep it up and then I can lower this um, scissor lift down I actually put a piece of plywood over the top of it to make a nice table I can drain oil out of it and I can just I'll be able to work on my stool there and it's it's pretty mint for being in a tight garage so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll get back This shouldn't come out as one hole. Hopefully, it looks like it's brand new. These steels, if you look at these steels, they look, it's just, yeah, it's just, it's brand new and it needs to be run. I think that's it. They're really hard to get apart. You can see the steels are sticking to there. They're all wet too, which is good. I don't see any dry spots. It's just the viscosity of the oil and the fact that it sat for a little bit here. Yep. See, I gotta. I gotta get in there and prime part. All right, now that I got that sorted out, if you look, probably can't see it in the camera there. These grooves right here, they're really not that bad. And it doesn't look like anybody's filed them down yet. Inside ones I can feel, outside ones I can't. But I'm just gonna go ahead and put it back together. Pretty happy that this clutch is pretty much brand new. That's a good thing, cause I was a little worried that it was just gonna be old and the plates were gonna be rusty and that it was just locked up from sitting. So I'm happy that it was new and it was wet. So it, it was just stuck together from sitting for a little bit. I'm sure it would have cleared itself out if it would have started the engine and just kind of dumped the clutch use the ass method I call it it's aim at something soft and uh, so I guess we're gonna move on to the clutch cable adjusting that I'll put it back up on the stand and um, see if we can get see if we can pull the clutch in and see if we can get that uh, clutch to actually slip before us I just confirmed that I got the clutch freed up I can pull the lever in put it in first spin the rear tire it does still want to turn turn over just a little bit but I can feel it slipping in there so with the fresh oil get this engine running put it up against something saw put it up against a tree put it up against the workbench start it up pull the clutch in slam it into first and just hope that it kind of breaks free and then see if we can get through and work a little bit of oil into that and break that clutch in uh, continuing with that I got to replace this lever here because it's just she's a little flopping around she's loose I'm gonna go ahead and replace the clutch cable too while I'm at it and uh, that will that'll do it for the clutch I might go ahead and throw the chain on it while I'm back in here I got two wheel spacers I got to put in too 
Uh, might just do that to kind of tie up drivetrain and then maybe move on to the carb or something else. I'll figure. Look at this. Allen head, hex head, hex head, Allen head. That just drives me insane. Had a real productive night tonight. Um, I got the clutch unstuck. I got that all pulled apart. I actually, I was happy I ordered that gasket. Wasn't sure if I needed it or not. And actually trying to get it unstuck didn't work. So pulling it apart, separating the plates definitely helped. I cleaned them. I don't want to say clean them up a little bit, but I wiped the oil. I re-oiled them with new oil, put them back together, and I was able to free them up to an extent. So it's actually showing signs that it's freed up now. So cross that off the list, but I'm actually going to create space because I found a couple other things that I need to address. Uh, one of those, the first one being, you know, front brakes are squishy. So I'm just going to put front brakes here. Uh, second thing I crossed off on the list was I changed out the levers. Big deal, right? Well, his clutch lever was really wore out. Yeah, you could grease it, you could run with it. He probably wouldn't have noticed it, but to me, I like to have things running smoothly, everything nice and ready to go. And right here at the bottom one, he wants to get running mint. So that's engine, everything ready to go. My goal is 40 hours, engine hours that is. That's usually I want to say close to a race season for me, at least getting to that point where I'm past the 24 hour, winding down the season, I already know where I'm in points, know if I need to get to a certain, know what I need to do maintenance wise to achieve that championship. So 40 hours is de a decent goal for someone that's just trying to trail ride. They could probably get two years out of that, maybe. Uh, so we'll cross the levers off. His shifter lever, I guess it's part of levers, I could have left it up there, but uh, it's kind of loose, it's aluminum, I'm not a fan of them, I'm more of a steel shifter lever guy, but I gotta pull that off, clean it, put it back on, tighten it up, see if I can get that to tighten up and be a little bit more reactive for him. Uh, tomorrow I'm definitely going to pull the carb off. Take a look inside there, make sure the jetting's correct or close to it. Um, I have a throttle cable adjuster that goes on the top of it that he actually gave me in one of the boxes here that I, it broke off on the one here. Throttle, the throttle is real chunky feeling and I know it's just binding in there. So I want to put a throttle cable on it right here in the adjuster. Route that, make sure everything's routed nicely. So, uh, Cleaning the carb, throttle cable and adjusters, kind of the same one, we're going to go with that. Uh, air filter is going to follow that because once I get the boot on there, I uh, get the new clamp on there that he was missing, carburetor is all back together, get the whole, in, the whole intake system going, then we'll be able to start it really at that point if I want to, but I noticed uh, the radiator hoses are... Some of them are kind of longer than they should be. They're aftermarket ones. They're red. It's actually kind of a cool accent to the green. But they're kind of kinking. They're, some are too long in some spots. And I just want to see if I can clean that up for them. Maybe cut an inch out here. Cut a half inch out. Just clean them up. Clean up the hose clamps. Because I see some that could be snagging on stuff. Facing the wrong direction. I just want to clean those up. Because it's kind of my OCD kicking in. Uh, I actually put the clutch cable on, so we'll go ahead and erase that. Front axle nut. Uh, actually, the front axle itself has got some thread, some thread issues on it. So, go ahead and put. We'll file those down. See if I can't. I don't have a tap that size, but I think I can clean the threads up enough that we can get the nut on and off, and it'll. It won't be an issue. It's just kind of smushed on one corner of it. It'll be all right. Uh, I put the chain on. That's done. Air filter, talked about that. Throttle cable adjuster, we talked about that. And a pipe mount. If you got a broken pipe mount, you get the pipe and a silencer I gotta put on before I get it running. So tomorrow night, put that on and 
hopefully we can address the oh I want to try doing a leak test on it when I have the carb off of it I have a little gauge and it's got a Schrader valve on it that I can put about 7 psi into the cylinder I'll plug the exhaust on it the exhaust port I just want to see if that reed cage is leaking because I know that well this one's actually got a uh, boys and red valve in it I see some sealer around it already so hopefully someone wasn't in there trying to seal up a leak and they haven't gotten it but I just want to make sure that he's not sucking in any air because that would cause a lean situation and it's got a new cylinder head or a new cylinder on it or maybe a re uh, replated one because it's clean so I want to make sure it doesn't blow up on them I just want to make sure that everything's tight if it did blow up then I want to make sure that the crank seals aren't leaking that it's just going to be it's ready to run at that point so pressurizing the cylinder and that whole system is going to show me I'll spray soapy water around everything make sure none of the gaskets are leaking or none of the seals are leaking in the sort and so yeah for tonight I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna pack it in for tonight it is 147 I'm gonna go to bed.